Hey there, what's up you guys? Welcome to the Matt Hatter Media Channel. My name is Clay. If this is your first time here, then welcome. And if not, welcome back. It's good to see you. Hope you guys are all doing really well. Okay, so in this video, I want to go over my long-term um, review and thoughts of the Galaxy S21 Ultra uh, in 2022. So, um, obviously with the release of the S22 Ultra. It's not at the top of the heap anymore. It is performance wise, but as far as like uh, the, the current model phone year, uh, you know, top tier flagship that you have in your pocket, that would be the S22 Ultra now. Um, this is still a fantastic phone for a lot of reasons. Just to cut right through things, um, the most important thing, in my opinion, as far as the standout feature, is you do still have the 100 times magnification space zoom on this phone, which has improved uh, even more since I've owned this thing since the release of uh, Android 12 and other software slash UI updates. It was already good, and now it's gotten even better as far as like the lock on and stability of it. So again, if you want to aim for the 100 times space zoom, you gotta go with either this or the S22 Ultra. And at that point, it's just whether or not you wanna pay a little bit extra money for the S Pen and you have the uh, Note-esque design with the kind of um, extra curved screen compared to uh, this guy, which is by comparison, a little more tame. Uh, so another quick important thing is I really love this phone, but the one gripe I have about it is the fact that it still is a slightly somewhat curved of a, of a display. I just like flat displays so much better for uh, multiple reasons. And thankfully they're starting to move away from that, but um, it, it is a gradual thing. And that's basically my one main actual gripe with it. Other than that, the uh, software performance, everything else has been pretty much as outstanding with it, especially the camera system. I'm really surprised how significant the improvement has been in just one year's time. By using just software optimizations to make the camera system experience better it's been really cool and if you guys would like to see a little bit more footage of me showcasing the uh, camera system and super zoom on it I have done uh, an additional video that is on my channel on that so my one complete the screen but make no mistake this is an awesome 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 panel so the downside of the screen in my opinion of course it's curved you might like that but dang the screen to body ratio on this phone is just a wow I don't have another, I don't own another phone that has such a small screen to body ratio and it's amazing. Samsung already has some of the best panels uh, in the phone world and this is a bright, vibrant, 120 hertz, 1440p panel. So already just by specs alone, it puts it at the top of the heap, but dang. The fact that you get to choose how boosted or vivid or basically the, the saturation or punch of your colors on the display while using it is pretty, pretty awesome. So yeah, to reiterate and just come and bring that full circle, the display, even though it's not my favorite design choice, the display on this phone is amazing. Amazing. It's the closest thing to a completely bezel-less display that I have ever uh, had the pleasure of using. And I still love using it for that very reason. So it's awesome. So yeah, clearly there is a significant design choice difference with this. Uh, and that's okay. You have the Note-esque design with the S22 Ultra. They're just merging the two uh, product lines for the most part, or simplifying it, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, you know, they do have some good, decent colors this year. I really get down with the green. I don't know about the Samsung exclusive red, but, um, you know, I don't know if you guys have seen that, but it's a little different. And by the way, guys, if you're more fairly new to phones, or phone marketing, or the phone world, as far as biometric security goes, the Touch ID, I believe they call it the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor, is really second to none. I don't know of a better uh, fingerprint sensor that exists on any other phone. I've tested quite a few, but I really don't think that there is one. So yeah, it's pretty amazing. You can pretty much just hit without missing, you know, 
I, I really it took a while. I did take a while to get used to, it, but I really don't even have to look at it anymore just because of uh, doing it quite a bit over the time that I've owned this phone. But um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Really doesn't get better than that as far as uh, fingerprint sensors, which is a stark, stark comparison to other phones like the Pixel 6, which that is literally this thing's Achilles heel. They're finally starting to tighten up the software on this guy, but still, man, the optical fingerprint sensor on this guy is just one of the worst I've ever seen. Does it work? Yes. You really need to know how to do it. You need to know how to add a good fingerprint. You need to practice to be able to do it to get it to unlock semi consistently at all and with this you just really don't have to worry about something like that so you know that's awesome it really isn't even close to something like samsung's uh flagship s series it they're on two totally different levels as far as that goes now if you guys are not new to my channel you're also going to know that i have been um, a pixel enthusiast and that transitions heavily to the camera system uh so that's even one more reason why these make a stark contrast. Uh, over the last like year or so since I've had this phone, through software, the camera system has gotten better. And I shouldn't say this one. I'm really mostly talking about my Pixel 5, not the 6. That one, from what I've noticed, is actually, um, it takes worse photos now, believe it or not. I prefer the computational algorithm that they stuck to all the way up until basically Android 12 dropped. And that's when I noticed or started seeing a difference maybe it was or wasn't uh intentional i don't know but um you know i definitely see a difference i took a lot of pics with that phone so obviously that's what you don't want but here's another thing to add to that um samsung is really at the top of their game right now they're not just the number one uh smartphone seller as far as volume goes in the world but they've really really tightened up their software i used to really honestly not care for one ui but gradually over the years, it got cleaner and more uh, dependable. You still maintain pretty much all of the customizability. You have all the features under the sun. That's kind of what these Samsungs are known for. Um, they just kind of give them pretty much almost everything when it comes to customizability. And then you can pick your feature set when it comes to um, what price point you want to go with, either if you want to pick a flagship or maybe a mid-tier or even lower than that. But the software experience has been very pleasant on this phone. I found it even more reliable than it was when I bought it. The One UI elements are very enjoyable, trying out different wallpapers, utilizing different color palettes. It's been really cool, but again, guys, the camera system has actually taken a uh, significant step up since this phone was running the software that it was when I took it out of the box and it was brand new. So they did update some UI elements, which I think look way better and um, I believe it's a little bit more uh, intuitive as far as navigating around the camera system now. But yeah, Samsung, it seems like, has been able to really dial in their photo game, and it's really cool. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fluff it and say that it's like an APS-C or full-frame camera killer, and it really still is even quite up to par when it comes to, like, say, dedicated point-and-shoots that you can buy from, say, Sony, Canon. But when it comes to camera photography on a smartphone system this is tip top of its tier so again very enjoyable i do also really want to take the time to appreciate um you know the fact that they do have uh, all these dedicated modes which include director's view where you can shoot both front and back dedicated pro modes for photo and video and it really just does stick to samsung's um formula and design nature when it comes to their smartphones just giving you everything that they possibly can give you and you know it's kind of just what you expect from samsung and you know in this case it is baked into the price this is a top tier phone you get the top tier hardware to go with it but what that does is you got everything and it's not going anywhere as the phone continues to age and everything ideally like situations we see here the software only gets better and especially when it comes to Samsung's, like I said, they have features galore. So it might actually take you a while to uh, learn how to use all the features on the thing. Here's actually one of my favorite features on the pro camera mode. You can actually utilize focus peaking and you can see it will show you exactly where your depth of field is. And of course that transitions to both photo and video. And uh, yeah, just, you know, super cool stuff like that that you really come to appreciate so yeah the super versatile camera system that you get with going with, with the s21 ultra along with the amazing viewing experience with the panel that they have on here um it's great so 
hardware is definitely up to par compared to what you paid for for it. Now, if there was one thing that I would say comes up a little bit short, it's a battery. It's not, the battery is good, but it's not great like every other feature on here. As far as all the ultra features go, everything except the battery on here is ultra. The battery life on this is not ultra. It's good, but it's definitely not ultra. I wanna be clear about that. Also, the phone does not charge as fast as I would like it to. It doesn't charge slow, but it's not super fast either. In fact, I would probably say it's a little bit slower than I um, expected it to be as far as charging, but you know what? That's okay. That's a nitpick. Can't expect everything to charge at like 65 watts like my OnePlus 9, for example, because then again, we all know what happens when Samsung overdoes it on the battery. So yeah, overall experience as a Samsung flagship, it's great. It's everything that it was supposed to be everything that they promised um they delivered on it i mean with the price tag it's good that they did but still that's business so i guess uh the point of this video to help anyone is if you are looking at purchasing an s21 ultra or you think this is the one you want to buy yeah i can absolutely recommend it it's a fantastic phone and if you want the 100 times space zoom you kind of have to either do this or the s22 ultra it's a matter of your preference at that point so yeah with that being said, this has been a great phone, and uh, I'm definitely glad that I purchased it. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything else that you would like to know from me about this video or this phone, um, put them in the comments. I do not mind answering them. I would be happy to talk with you guys about these things. So with that being said, um, I guess I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.